Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Today I want to begin telling you the story of a rather wonderful house in County Galway. Unfortunately, the story has a somewhat unhappy ending, but that's not unusual with Irish country houses. The house in question is called Dunsandal, and it was rightly described by the late Mark Bentz Jones as the finest 18th century house in County Galway. Dunsandal was built by a branch of the Daly family. They were descendants of an ancient Irish clan called the O'Dorlugs. Their name was supposed to derive from a 6th century monk called Dalek, a pupil of St. Colman of Cloyne. The O'Dorlugs were hereditary poets to various Irish royal courts, a number of them holding the position of Ard Olaf, chief poet of Ireland. The dailies of Dunsandal claimed descent from a 13th century bard, Danica Moore O'Dorlug. The Annals of Clonmacnois describe Danica as chief in Ireland for poetry, while the Annals of the Four Masters called him a poet who never was and never will be surpassed. He would come to be known as the Irish Ovid, thanks to the calibre of his work. Originally, the O'Dorlugs were settled in the Midlands, in West Meath, but like many other Irish families, during the upheavals of the 16th and 17th centuries, they found themselves pushed further west. The branch that concerns us were pretty canny, however, and in 1578, one Dermot O'Daly received a grant from Queen Elizabeth of an area of land not far from Athen Rye in County Galway. His descendants gradually acquired more plots of land in this part of the world, not far from what remains of another estate called Woodlawn. And although Roman Catholic and loyal to the Jacobite cause, they somehow managed to keep hold of their estates. They also made a number of judicious marriages connecting them with other important families. By the early 18th century, the Dailies, who had dropped the O from their surname, were sufficiently wealthy and well-established to buy the land on which Dunsandal stood from the Burke's Earls of Clan Rickard. Located some 15 miles south of their other property, there was already a tower house at Dunsandal, and this the family occupied for some time. But around the middle of the 18th century, Dennis Daly commissioned a fine new Palladian residence. As is so often the case, we don't know who was responsible for the building. But the late Knight of Glynn tentatively suggested that the architect might have been someone called Davis Ducart. Davis Ducart was an architect responsible for a number of not dissimilar houses elsewhere in Ireland, such as Castletown Cox, County Kilkenny, and Kilshanig, County Cork. On the other hand, Dunsandall's design was not dissimilar to that of French Park, another now lost house in neighbouring County Roscommon. Like so many other Irish Palladian houses, French Park has been attributed to Richard Castle. Unfortunately, we shall probably never know for certain who was the architect, just as is the case with so many other Irish houses. As can be seen, Dunsandal consisted of a substantial centre block of five bays and three storeys over raised basement. It was linked by short straight passages to two-storey service wings on either side. Both front and back of the main house had pedimented brake fronts with a Diocletian window inserted into the tympanum. And in the next episode, we'll look a little further into the design of Dunsandal and its handsome interiors. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthete. Goodbye.